I like this demonstration that I'm going to do because it is one of those demonstrations that would really help a student in an advanced placement class get the idea of solubility products. And it's also a very pretty demonstration. Sometimes when you say all potassium salts are soluble, students don't think about the fact that any salt's only soluble to a certain point. Even potassium chloride eventually becomes saturated and you can't get anything else to dissolve. And of course it's really easy to make a saturated solution. All you do is put enough salt in there that you can't get any more to dissolve. And I made my saturated solution by simply putting a lot of potassium chloride in a bottle, shaking it up and letting it sit for a while so that it settled down. And now the solution above that solid is saturated. And, then, and again, this is a nice demo from my standpoint because I can leave this on the shelf and I can easily grab it. And of course, we're all looking for easy things to do. So I point out to the students that when the potassium chloride dissolves, I get potassium ions and chloride ions. But if I have a saturated solution, then I have an equilibrium. Okay. And we know for salts, we can write a KSP, which would be the product of the potassium ion concentration times the chloride ion concentration. Now, the table value tells me that potassium chloride, when it's saturated, is 3.7 molar. So if the potassium chloride is 3.7 molar, then the ion concentration, when that dissolves, it's 1 to 1. So the potassium ion is 3.7, and the chloride ion is 3.7. So the KSP of potassium chloride is 13.7. And you might point out to the students that I'm giving them a value at about room temperature, standard state, when I give them this number, and that solubility does, of course, vary with temperature as well. Right now, though, we're just going to look at the solubility of potassium chloride at room temperature. And I'm going to put gloves on because what I want to do is I want to add a common ion. And we've already studied equilibria, and we know that if we increase the chloride ion concentration, that we're going to increase the number of collisions with potassium chloride, we're going to increase the rate of the reverse reaction, and we ought to get more solid forming, right? Or, or the formation of a solid, if we increase that chloride concentration high enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put potassium chloride in one test tube. And then in another test tube, I want to put an equal amount of 6 molar hydrochloric acid, which is really why I'm wearing the rubber gloves, is for the acid here. So, okay, equal amounts. Well, I asked the students to predict for me what will happen when I mix 6 molar hydrochloric acid with the saturated solution of potassium chloride. And I can put those down in here for a minute. Students would do the calculation and then watch what happens when I mix them. Now that wasn't very exciting, was it? Nothing. Hmm. What would this mean in terms of my calculations then? I've mixed equal volumes, right? So when I calculate the potassium ion concentration, if I've doubled the volume, is the potassium ion still 3.7 molar? No, it's half of that. It's 1.85 molar because I've doubled the volume. All right, what about the chloride ion concentration? Well, there's the original chloride that was in there. Right? So that's also going to be 1.85 molar. But since I used 6 molar hydrochloric acid and I doubled that volume, it's going to be plus 3 molar. So the total concentration of the chloride ion is 4.85 molar. 
And we're really not doing a KSP here. What we're doing is a Q, a reaction quotient. Quotient. So the Q for this is going to be the potassium ion concentration times the chloride concentration. Because remember, we're not at equilibrium. And the Q for this is 1.85 times 4.85. And that is, let me cheat because I usually do this with my students, 8.96. Well, the KSP is much larger than Q, right? Because 13.7 is bigger than 8.96, and we didn't get a precipitate. Okay. What would happen if instead of using 6 molar, I use 12 molar? Okay. Well, we go through these same calculations. Okay. If we use 12 molar, K is still going to be 1.85 molar, but this time the chloride concentration is going to be 1.85 molar plus half of 12 or 6 molar, which is going to give me 7.85 molar. And now when I do my Q, I've got 1.85 times 7.85, and I get what do I get? I get 14.5. And since in this case Q is greater than the KSP, okay, so it's 14.5 larger, I expect I'm going to get a reaction. Let's see. I'm going to take and try to mix equal volumes. And if we've got equal volumes, and I mix them, I don't even have to stir that. You see all the excess potassium chloride settling out because we've exceeded the solubility product at 25 degrees. So. In this demonstration, then, with the students, we can reinforce the dilution effect. If you mix equal volumes, you've half the concentration. And they often forget to do that, but this will stick in their mind.